Okay. Ready and go. Oh. Oh my goodness. This thing screams. Listen to it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. We're back to another video. All right. So today I have the probably the most innovative truck I've ever seen. Probably. Imagine a truck that could have sports car acceleration, off-road capability, versatility, luxury, efficiency for being electric. And this is what I have here at the Rivian. This truck here can do it all. And when I say that, it can haul your family. You have the luxury amenities, heated, ventilated seats. You know, the, the interior trim is nice and elegant. You have the range of appropriate EV, 300 miles of range towing capacity up to 10,000 pounds of towing off-road capability this has the ability to raise itself to clear obstacles has the ability to not only that but it can wait in depths of 39 inches of water the ride height can increase up I would say it's about three and a half inches more than what uh, we're at right now Full LED headlights, automatic rain sensing wipers, and it's a truck. You have the utility of a bed. You have an air compressor. I'm amazed at this truck. You got buttons here. You can also activate this remotely from inside the truck or from the phone app. Your gear tunnels. This goes all the way through, through and through. Look at that, all that storage capability. 12 volt outlets on each side. Even if a person gets trapped in here, there's a glim dark button for them to get out to remotely release the latch. So this is a Rivian. This is a Rivian R1T. All right, this is Rivian's first product. Um, they have the new one coming out, the R1S, which is the SUV version. Seven passenger SUV. Seven passenger SUV is going to have everything minus this innovative gear tunnel. This right here is what uh, is pretty cool too. You have a what's called a Rivian torch. So it is a 1,000 lumen flashlight built in that is pretty powerful, and it charges itself right here in this dock. an idea how much powerful that flashlight is this is like your low high and this is your high and sunny day bright daylight you can see this light is bright and that's about the horsepower probably not this is zero to 60 let's get windy zero to 60 and 3.3 seconds 835 horsepower this is a quad motor which means it's got four different motors on here to provide you that towing capacity, that towing, that pulling power you need, the range. Um, it then has the ability to be more efficient. So he has an eco program, which can then only activate the front motors and leave the rear motors separately. So you can save efficiency if you don't need it, if you're cruising on highway long trips. Um, but that's that performance right there, that puts it on par. I mean, this can accelerate to 60 miles an hour mostly of your performance cars, your exotic cars, it's gonna be right there with them as a truck. That's, that's what's crazy about it. 
but people don't buy this for the speed the speed is a byproduct of the having the extra power for pulling everything else um, obviously you know it's not going to hang with any court cars in the canyons but for having the family hauler having the, the utility the all-in-one product here i think is really does a good job you, you, you never feel like you need more with this there's also a 600 horsepower variant that does have a dual motor which is a front and rear motor um, that's available look at all the luxury appointments you get in here get the lumen pedals you get some sport in here too two wireless chargers right here you have cup two cup holders that come down here a portable camp Bluetooth speaker and I use speaker once this speaker is phenomenal I have a JBL flip 5 that I use and this right here has definitely better sound better bass just better clarity overall and it lives right here and charges right here in this own little dock. The air vents are electronically controlled through your app or through your I say app to your uh, air vent setting. So by me moving, you'll see it right here on the screen. I'm gonna move this back and forth and you'll see this, the vent move itself. Like I said, heated ventilated seats, heated rear seats. Full panoramic um, glass roof that's deeply tinted. So on those hot, sunny days, you're not going to be feeling the heat coming through the ceiling at all. Double vanity. Auto dimming rear view mirrors and side view mirrors dim as well. Blind spot monitor. It does get you advanced warning. So there's a car coming up really fast. It'll give you a little bit earlier detection. I'll just show it here. And as well on the main display, you'll see warnings. Sound system is a 1200 watt Meridian elevation sound system. Um, I would say this really comes close to, if not, I would say probably about the same as I'll find in my Bang & Olsen. Uh, I think the Bang & Olsen just hits a little bit harder um, on some of the uh, lows. But I think this right here is really good, especially the 19 speakers, the placement speakers, the ceiling speakers right here. I think does a really good job of just giving you that immersive feeling when you're listening to some of these, uh, these soundtracks. Um, obviously, you have your graphical equalizer right there to customize your settings. And of course, you have options to do some defaults, things like that to get, you know, trying to tune the sound to what you like right now. So it all goes from there, what you like and you can obviously play with the different settings um, and then you can fade it in and out if what you need. There's Amazon Alexa in here. There's let's see that's Spotify. Um, and then, of course, you got your other climate controls that stay fixed in here. Like this whole row always stays lit up. If there's a passenger in here, you also have they also have their setting. Your climate control, you have recirculation. There's heated and uh, cold seats heated steering wheel there's a dog mode and what's this thing oh that's if you want cold legs too <laughs> so you can change an automatic mode go from there power off so it, like i said there's a lot of similarities with with test like i said the dog mode right there it's like huh, i remember who came out with that first but um, it's cool that it's there so you don't feel like you got to buy a particular brand in order to get something else. The space that we have, I was expecting a little bit more, but you know, that, that could be subjective at this point. Um, going across the top here, just some ideas too, I was looking at this. You got different light setting, you touch it once, touch it again, you got a dimmer setting, and then it goes one more for off. I'm not sure what these sensors are for, I don't know if they can read your eyes or not, or you know, their attention sensor soft feels leather like i said this truck just gives you a luxury feel but then it reminds you that this is sort of your adventure style it keeps reminding you everything stay adventurous everything else um this right here feels like it came from a tree 
you know, really that you can feel the grains and the wood um, is exposed and there's no coating on this. So it really feels like off the tree. If my best way I can describe this is, especially this interface using this, this system, is if I can say Tesla, you know, for being the standard, Tesla could be like Apple. And if that's the case, this is like Android, where Android can do some things and some things it could probably does better than Apple. But Apple just seems like the, the, the gold standard. And that's sort of what I feel like when I work with this inter, this infotainment system. A um, little different. There's some things about it that, that I'm just trying to get used to. But it works. To adjust your light settings in here. Go back into the... So you just click up. And this is your wipers right there. So you can right now it's in automatic mode. You can see if I click up more, I can change the, the settings. Or I can just go to, like I said, if I go up here, then this goes to higher and lower, or I can turn them all the way off. Light settings, click it up there. Then you can just, you want the lights on, automatic, on, front and fog, lights all, and all fog. So all fog has got front and rear fog light. You can see the indicator here, front fog light, rear fog light. Rear fog light should only use and dense snow. This visibility reasons um, don't ever just use it just to drive in a clear night. I know people like the front fogs on like a regular day, but let's see what that looks like. I'll show you why, why you don't drive your rear fogs on and what they look like. See the tail light runs across the top strip right there. Those lower lights right there are the fog lights. If fog lights in the rear are just really bright light. Excuse me. They look like almost like tail lights, but they're just bright lights. But that's so when you're driving behind, if I'm coming from behind and there's not much I can see, it's say like it's just really snowy or something like that. I won't be able to see the lights that went off, but I won't be able to see much. So that's just a way where um, it, it penetrates more through those low visibility things like snow or dense fog. Back in here again, I'll show you the front fog light. Those front fog lights are the lower ones down by the grill. Obviously, these are your headlights right there. These are your fog and your turn signal is the outer beam. So let's turn the turn signal on now. So. All right, look at these bright LED um, reverse lights. These lights can also function as welcome lights, uh, pathway lighting. So the fog lights turn on in the front and the reverse lights turn on in the rear to eliminate your path, either if you're f parked front or backwards. Turn signals. I mean, this really is a handsome looking truck. The front, I'm still, is growing on me. Fortunately, the cup holder cannot fit a 28 ounce Gatorade bottle. It will, won't go in here. So those who are out working with the truck and need a big bottle, think, think about that. But you can also set it, for example, I can set it right in here and it fits just a fine in there, right there for me. There's something else I didn't go over. Well, it's this floor area. This floor is just, you got a lot of storage you can set here. I mean, if you have a purse or something or a book bag or anything like that, you can set right there. Center console, 
the US, two USB-C ports. Um, and that's pretty much it down there. Glove box. I didn't check the glove box. Where's the glove box? This is where I don't know. Does it have a glove box? Can I open the glove box? And here's how to access all the stuff in the car. Okay. So gear tunnel. And it tells you if you open it that you can't close it, it'll only open. Alright. But yeah, there's I don't see anything for glove box. Sorry, I have a big sweet tooth. Love candy. Um, up top, we got the Alcantara material up here. You got your hazard light switch up, up top here. And an emergency. All right, switch. so there's multiple ways you can get into Well, say multiple ways. There's two ways you can get into it. Um, you can use your phone as a key, similar to what you'll find in Tesla. There's also, you get a key fob, um, not just a card, but you can actually get a fob. You can see here is a fob. You have your lock and lock buttons. You have your tailgate and your, if you can see it here in the light, your front button. Now, the front is power. Just press this twice. One, two and the front opens up and it is a power front so it is nice that it closes also power so if i if i did that would it shut yep shuts itself so that's nice this thing has the most unique sound when you lock it listen to it Sounds like a mantis or some locust. Tailgate is not, is, it is a kind of a, I think it's an electronic release, but you still had to manually shut it. Now if I lock the, you see how the door handles are now tucked in and just watch when I unlocked. And this also works if I approach it. If my, if my phone right now is on me, the vehicle unlocks, door handles present themselves like this. And then I'm able to grab onto it with a lever, pull the door handle, and shut it that way. So like this, or you can do it like that, however you want to get into it. Nice solid feeling, like, you know, grabbing, feel like you're not going to break it. Then you get into it. I open this door, and it's just... The way that the Rivians, uh, I, I, that's when I saw the interior, I was like, wow, this, and I've seen videos of it, but just seeing it in person, you can see a lot of detail. There's a lot of attention to detail that goes into here. Uh, a lot of design. I really like the design. I like the design of the seats. I like the design of just the, they call this, I think, black ash. Uh, let me check and see what they, they call that. Um, yeah, dark ash wood uh, trim. And you can see the nice speaker grills from the Meridian sound system. Um, even floor mats sort of match. So if I were to step inside here, let me just give you an idea of how much space that I have. This is at its lower right height. So this it should, it is, you know, feel a little bit tall to get into it, a little bit of a stretch. Um, but not too bad to get into inside here. Um, the way the seats support you, I just... It feels like a, a good, comfortable place to be. You have a giant panoramic sunroof. Um, pressing the brake pedal automatically activates it. Now everything's turned on, ready to go. Um, the steering wheel just has a good hold to it. It's nothing, nothing like really to, to say, but but it's just it's just one of those things where I feel like it's just right. Like this is what I, I would expect it to be. You know, um, the, your drive controls obviously are here on the stalk. Wiper controls are here. You actually wiper controls, light controls are there. Um, I don't know what this one would do. Oh, this probably being your, probably a spray. I'm assuming that, so I'm not gonna touch that. I don't wanna spray any water on here. Um, and then we get to the screen area. We'll cover that here later, but I'm gonna show you that. You got the aluminum pedals, has some other things here. We'll cover that. Let me get to the back seat. All right, and I'm five foot eight. This is my driving position. I'm gonna sit here in my driving position. And 
for a truck of this size, um, it feels like a good size SUV, SUV car. It got hardback seats, you got hangers here. It's like, it's like a USB-C port there too. Maybe you can hang a tablet. Maybe it's an adapter, you can hang a tablet here, I don't know. Um, you got, you get tuck maps in here. Everything sort of looks outdoorsy, adventure, but luxurious. Is that that extra little touch of luxury that they add that just feels premium and prestigious. You got armrest, two cup holders. You have a screen here for your rear uh, climate controls, rear heated seats. Um, I don't think there's any ventilated seat option. There's two, two more USB-C ports. And then I think there's dome light controls. Uh, back here, you can see the panoramic glass. Each have a grab handle. There's another speaker back here too. So your rear passengers get to enjoy the same sound system as everybody else. Um, and the seat design sort of continues in the back seat as well. Um, I have a car seat. I'll definitely show you that. Uh, I don't have latch um, to, to show you because I didn't bring the base with me, but I do have the rear facing infant seat. So I'll attach that with the seat belt and I'll show you how much room there is with the front. All right, uh, glass does not open. I noticed some, some trucks have the rear glass that opens up, this thing does not. And then of course you have your center console with pass through. Car seat test. No, I don't have the base, but if I did have the base, it would just more sit up like this. But you can see I still have room back in here. Um, it's a seat. Let's set the front seat to get an idea of what we have. And plenty of leg room in here. In the back area, um, you'll see you have your tie downs for your bed. Uh, this is my first truck I reviewed, so um, bear with me if I don't know too much of what the standard is today. Last time I've been around trucks has been so your early 2000s, like Z71, things like that. So I apologize. But uh, yeah, the bed is small. Uh, not your typical full-size bed, but you know, most people who drive trucks don't utilize the full bed anyway. Um, so if you just want something to occasional use, Home Depot run, things like that, this bed size should be more than adequate. Um, two ways you can release it. You can do it from the app, or you can do it from uh, this button here. Drops the bed down. There's lighting inside the bed. There's two LED lights on both sides here for the bed. Thought that was interesting. Got more tie downs here. Got two more up in the front. Uh, one thing that's interesting here, you have a onboard air pump. So you can definitely, um, I guess, inflatables, things like that, tires. And then on the other side, you have two 120 volt outlets so you have that option maybe plug in accessories things like that camping gear then you have your spare tire which is under here and as a full size spare which i believe is matchy rim because the same scorpion uh verde per the pirelli that's already on on here so you get the pirelli scorpions here on these wheels so it's probably the same size. So I'm gonna shut that. Uh, tailgate, once you close it up, it's just manual shut. Um, and then there's options for power uh, tonneau cover or you can get the manual tonneau covers. So you have that. I think at one point they were doing it, but they stopped it, but they bring it back. The more I look around this truck, the more I see cameras. It's a camera right there. Um, it's cameras all over this thing. I'm going to go around. Do you also have your, they call these gear tunnels. So you got your left gear tunnel here. So you like, you put stuff all through here. So let's say I want to put anything long right across there. I can, and if I go down to the other side of this truck, 
and I open the other side. And this can all be done through the app as well. And then there's more 120 volt plugs. So it gives this truck a lot of versatility. There's lights in here. Um, inside these tunnels, here's one as a first day kit. And I think the other one is a, some type of mobility kit. I'm not sure what this is. This may be some type of mobility pouch. Um, I'm not sure what that would be, but you have that. It says 120, 250 pounds max on this thing, so this can support uh, a lighter person. I probably could stand on this if I really want to, um, but obviously 250 pounds, you probably I wouldn't want to chance it. And just this truck is fantastic. I mean, look at this thing. And the color, guess the color. I'm gonna give you one, two, three. Color is forest green, simple color. Kind of reminds me of the crown, the Crayola crown, forest green. Let's see, let's open the hood. They don't call it a frunk, but they call it a hood. And then you have more storage in here. Each one of these, these um, gear tunnels and things like that, they all have these person latches. So if someone was in here, they would somehow won't be able to get trapped inside. So that's good to know that you won't be trapped in here. It goes deeper for the charging information or whatever you want to have. You got two more lighting lights in here. Got your port down here for your washer fluid. All right, so truck room limited for just this is a medium check-in suitcase. Um, I might have room for a backpack here and that's pretty much it. And I can't fit a stroller because this thing right there, that little latch, this was a little bit open. I can squeeze a lot more things in even a medium suitcase can go right in there. You know, I used to like, man, I don't know if I liked the Rivians when they first came out, but that look is just starting to grow on me. And I don't know why it is, because I used to always think, oh, these, these are little bug-eyed trucks and stuff here. Also, there's a charging port. Uh, so there's a charging port there. Um, J1772, you got the CCS. And if I guess I touch that, I should close it. There you go. got actual blind spot lights on the mirror. I know it has cross traffic alert because I was backing out of a driveway, did receive a cross traffic alert. But let's hop in this thing. I'm sure you've probably seen enough of the, uh, the Rivian stuff from the outside. Let's do a quick walk around first and then we'll jump inside. How's that sound? All right, I'm gonna close all this stuff up. And just give you an idea of the cameras I was telling you about. Got a camera there, right here underneath, underneath the mirror. Got a camera here. Show you one on top. I think there's a camera right there. Oh, there's a camera right here too. This does have its own version of uh, lane keep assist and adaptive cruise control. So I'm assuming that's helped with the lines. All right, let's hop in. So as soon as I sat in here, the screen's turning itself on. You can look inside your information. You can see that it tells me the gear tunnel's open, the back door's open, and the driver's side door, obviously. Um, you have your range right there. Next to that, you have your suspension level. So you have different suspension heights. Right now, we're at right now we're in the lowest level. I'm not sure if it goes down to that other 
level as well. There's Lane Keep Assist that's on. And then you have your um, maps here on the side. When you drive, you get the vehicle here. It tells you everything as far as what's going on. Um, you know, if you see your brake lights, turn signals, things like that. So, you, you know, if you're familiar with Tesla, it, it looks just familiar. Just nice to have a cluster right here in the middle. To adjust your mirrors, things like that, you have to go inside of the settings. So if I was going to make an adjustment and say I want to adjust the steering wheel, you have to go hit this option. Then it allows you to use, you see here, it allows you to use this. And then this one changes the height. And it goes right there. And then I can restore if I want to go back to my restore height. Mirrors will be the same way. So you hit the mirror and then these controls, left, right mirror, up and down on the mirror. Okay. This left mirror, right mirror. That's, so that's how it works. All right. Let's close this thing up. It says close gear tunnel to change drive mode. So I'm not able to do anything until I actually shut this everything in here. So I shut the door. Okay. All right. So press fit in the brake pedal. You see that it comes to life. It's ready to go. If I go to drive, door's locked. And this is what I'm talking about. Right now the brake lights are on. If I turn the signal on, Turn signal has a nice, soft sound. Um, if you're a person who's annoyed by turn signal sounds, you would probably wouldn't be, be not be annoyed by this. Just listen to it. A um, little too soft for me, especially I, I put I kind of forget to leave it on. But um, like I said, if you're a person who just like thinks turn signals are clicky. All right. So let's go into here. You have, you can change your regenerative braking modes. Now, when I had this on, it was on high and coming, even as a Tesla owner myself, I felt like, oh, I'm at the retrain how to drive a uh, EV again. I was like, this is, this feels, feels different. You have different modes here. You got your all purpose. I think this is like your normal mode, um, sport mode. It's changing. It just dropped the ride height again to a low setting. Conserve. So it switches, says it's, it's auto height adjustments with aero efficiency and range. Snow mode. Goes even higher. Put it neutral as it does these heights because I don't want it to be, feel like it's pulling anything. So you can see here, snow mode has its own setting. And I made to go through this on the outside just so people can see what how the height looks. So this is a bit of a step to get in here from this from the high setting. Um, I wouldn't like I said I'm not complaining about that, but just a little bit of stretch. All right, so let's. Um, Let's take out of the snow mode and let's go back to sport mode. I'm gonna put it back in neutral just to, uh, so it's not holding itself there. All right, now let's go to sport mode. So sport is a sporty setting. This is saying that it's the lowest ride height. And then of course your um, all purpose, which goes up one more level than that. And then your standard height would be here. So the air pump's kicked in right now to obviously feed more to the suspension, but it's trying to reach that standard height. All 
All right, put it back in the park. This is standard height. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, so. so that's where we're at right now for standard height. And you got a chance to see what this very sport lowest level look like from there. Let's see how this uh, Rivian drives. Just give me my, my thoughts on it. So moves out sort of like your electric car. Uh, I don't have much to compare it to. I've only driven the i3 and then the Tesla products. So going into Rivian, just a little different, slightly different. Not the bad thing. You hear a lot more worrying for the motors, but this is a quad motor. Um, so I'm assuming there's a motor at each wheel as opposed to each axle for dual motor cars. Regen, it is strong, especially in the high setting right now that I'm in. I feel like I'm never need to touch a brake pedal. It's just, you can hear it. Ah, this cord's not gonna work. I just folded the mirrors in. So I found a charging cord, a 12 volt underneath the dashboard from a radar detector, but uh, I don't think this is gonna work out. I'm about to figure it out. Yeah, that's not gonna work. It keeps running across everything else. Um, but we'll do we'll do an acceleration test. I do want to see if this. I mean, this is a truck. I'm not expecting it to be anything fast. I don't even know the power level that it's supposed to be at. But I will step on it. Just maybe a quick, you know, little jaunt here to see what it'll do. Um, let's do this. Let me take it from here. I'll take this camera off. That way you can see what I do here from this point. We'll go to sport mode. Okay. Ready and go. Oh. Oh, my goodness. This thing screams. I mean, literally, this thing. <laughs> I I was. Is this. This is like Model 3 perf performance. Quick. Oh, I might mean, got the rear fog light on. I still got that on. Let's go to automatic. Um, yeah. Let's just say we're giving some room, merging on the highway, blah, blah, blah. And let's just try to pick up speed. This is, like I said, this thing surprised me. Um, all right, merging. The ride is rough in sport mode. Uh, what's this guy doing? So this is perfect opportunity because let's say this guy is wanting to go in slow and I want to get around him. 50 miles an hour on ramp and I want to shoot around him. Okay, pick a speed, dude. All right. Let's just say I... Yeah. I'm not going much faster than this, but this thing is strong for sure. I mean, let's see if 80 miles an hour, if it takes off just as much. Yeah. Yeah. On road, I can't take this off road because it's a rental. Um, on the road, it, it, it rides sporty, especially in the sport mode. 
it is really aggressive and sporty. I might have to go back and we'll check to see what it does on its normal conserve. I actually I know what the all-purpose mode does. But everything else, um, let's see if I, okay, cruise control's on. And then, highway assist. So highway assist is on, it's doing its own thing. I wonder if it does lane change. So, uh, let's try lane change. My steering's off. No, no, I'm at lane change. But it is doing the whole steering thing. If I were to switch over to conserve, oh, I gotta take off the cruise control first. I go to conserve. Of course, the batteries died on me, so I switch in the middle of this. So let's do another um, sport mode and we'll go from there. I'm not expecting anything great, but it is in sport mode. So let's see how it feels if you're driving a truck. Yeah, for, it, for a truck, it does really well. I've driven trucks before that don't stick the road like this. I'm not even pushing it. I'm not gonna push it like the wheel squeal, but and let's do a quick acceleration. Yeah. All right, now we've done the sport thing. We know that's about, this is obviously did not people buy it. Um, let's see how it does and conserve. Conserve mode looks like it's gonna limit the power output. You still get decent amount of power. Or maybe I don't, maybe that's not limited. This truck is this strong for being something in its size. I would never expect that from a Rivian. I know that their 060 is quick, but just on the highway it, it seems to roll out pretty decent. Like it now the parking lights are on. Nope, it's on auto, but the parking lights are on. I don't know why they, they're on. Maybe they run the lights, I'm not sure. That car really cut in close on me. Map is really clear and smooth. I like that. Yeah. This is the Rivian. I can see why people like it. I I was looking for a truck. Definitely one to check out. I haven't driven Lightning yet, so I can't compare too much on Lightning to know for sure. But from what I hear, I hear great things about the Lightning, so it's got to be just as good. After spending some time with the Rivian, there's some things that I kind of wish it had. Um, one which is soft closed doors. These doors are heavy. Um, but they take a lot of, like if I say, if I shut the door, I give it a nice. So I can really push this door, slam it. I feel like if it was soft close, those times like that, it'd be perfect for a door closer just to automatically suck it in. Um, I think that there should be a button here for loading it, especially if you hit the tailgate button, say you drop the tailgate, and then what if I need to load, put something in here that's um, heavy and by myself or you know, two people we need to lift this up into the truck. Be nice if I could uh, hit a button here to just squat the rear end, if not the whole truck. There is a setting here where the whole truck can kneel that is available in the settings, but say what if I you know, was already going into it and he loads something in here. Be nice to just put something in there to drop the suspension down to where it just squats it down for easier loading access. 
Another thing I'd be nitpicky about is Rivian's self-driving. Now, it does a good job in the stopping of traffic, does a good job on the highway. However, there are only some roads that it won't uh, enable the um, level two autonomous driving, which means lane keep assist and fork collision. It'll just, it won't be able to do the lane keep assist part. So I think with those things, it limits it as far as being on the highway. There are certain highways you won't be able to use it on. Just keep that in mind. And, you know, for me, it's like there is no auto lane change. I feel like now more and more cars are coming with the auto lane change when you're using that uh, lane keep assist adaptive cruise control function. But or not, um, I don't have that many complaints with the Rivian. There's a few little knickknacks that, I, you know, I could be if I be really picky. Uh, I think the, the screen is high resolution on here but i think sometimes i would prefer when you go to this this earth map view to be a little more 3d it looks very 2d like especially when you zoom in it's just it, it loses this is but that's that's just me being really 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 picky um so Next, next thing I'm gonna do is take it on the charger. Um, obviously these the charges at 15% right now. So I'm gonna go to Electrify America. Right now that's the limiting factor with this truck is the fact that if you are road tripping it, you're limited to limited charging stops. But I think that should be changing soon as Rivian did adapt to the NACS adapter, which would then can use Tesla's charging network. Which we're getting to see because it, you know, there's no cyber truck yet. And at least till Cybertruck is out, this is this and the Lightning are your main choices. I haven't reviewed the Lightning yet, so I don't know much about the Lightning. But for right now, I do like this truck. All right, everybody, if, if you like the review, give me a thumbs up. Um, I, I apologize, don't know that much about it, um, but uh, just let me know what you think. And anyway, I'll see you next video. Now, I'll say right now, range anxiety. I have a little bit of range anxiety with this because I don't have the ability to use the Tesla to be charging network. And I'm not at my house. So I don't have, like where I live, I have to I have a wall connector at my house. So I always have the ability to know that I'm charging. Here, renting a vehicle, you don't have that um, convenience because I'm especially I'm out of town. So I'm relying on the public network and right here, I'm on the west side of Cincinnati. I just don't have that uh, network to support. So I have to drive to the east side to charge and then drive back. So it makes it a very, very inconvenient uh, way to experience it. I would say if you're gonna do something like this, get a charger, connect to your house and make your experience a lot better.